Let's talk about the hot new cellular technology, 5G. A lot of you out there might have 5G capable cell phones in your pocket right now. And if you're living in a major city, especially in an area of the world that has really well developed infrastructure, you might actually have 5G capability around you right now. You might have connected to a 5G tower and enjoyed the high speeds that this technology is able to give you. Now, right off the bat, I know that there's a lot of videos like this on the internet uh, criticizing 5G, talking about some kind of spooky aspects of it. So I'm gonna let you know right now, I left my tinfoil hat at the dry cleaners. So I'm not gonna take you all the way down to crazy conspiracy town. I'm going to talk about things that I know, that I actually know for sure. And if I get off into anything that I don't know for sure, I'm gonna let you know straight up. So the first thing about 5G that I do know for sure which nobody really seems to be talking about, is the increased tracking capability that 5G has compared to 4G and LTE. And you don't even really need to know a lot about technology to understand how this improved tracking capability works. So you guys have probably heard of triangulation. Maybe you've heard of it in the movies or a news report, uh, something like that. But triangulation, is a pretty effective way for figuring out where people are. I mean, it's literally how GPS works. Okay, in order for GPS mapping to do what it does, it needs to connect to at least three satellites um, in space, three or more GPS satellites, and they triangulate your location, and then they're able to tell you where you are within a given region. And the same thing applies with cell phones. So say if you commit a crime, or even if you don't commit a crime, because obviously I think it's public knowledge by now that police and governments have tracked people that haven't even done anything wrong. Uh, so say for whatever reason that somebody wants to track you, they can do this fairly effectively by triangulating the cell phone signal uh, from your phone to three or more cell towers, and then based off of how strong the signal is with your phone connected to these different cell towers, they can pretty much pinpoint your location, uh, at least if you have your phone on you, which most people obviously do, uh, they can pinpoint your location down to about three-fourths of a square mile. And this is pretty, pretty damn accurate when you consider how far these cell towers are from one another. Uh, 4G has a maximum distance of, a maximum effective distance of about 10 miles for the phone to be able to receive uh, any significant signal. Um, GPS is even more significant since those satellites are in medium Earth orbit. Uh, I think they're about 12,000 miles away. Um, because of this distance, you get three-fourths of a square mile. Now, that's pretty small. And again, given on of the environment, um, how the weather is and everything like that, it can be affected even more. If it's a bright sunny day like today, where there's not even a cloud in the sky, that region might be smaller. It might be half of a square mile or a quarter of a square mile. And if there's a blizzard, if there's bad weather conditions, then it might increase. It might go up to something like two square miles. Now, 5G is not a long distance signal. Okay, nowhere near as long as 4G at least. It's only effective up to about 1,000 feet, but it has a much faster speed. So it's a similar situation that we see with 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, where you either have a slower speed with an increased distance, or you have a higher speed with a decreased distance. So in order for this 5G to be effective, to at least have overlapping coverage, the cell phone companies are going to have to put a lot of these 5G towers uh, together within a given region. And because of how close together these towers are going to be, they're probably gonna be about 50 to 100 times closer compared to 4G towers. And that triangulation will also be 50 to 100 times more accurate. Um, probably even more accurate than that if you really think about it, since these towers are obviously gonna be capable of higher speeds and lower latency. They're gonna be able to transmit more data in a given amount of time than 4G towers. So if somebody wants to track you 
with um, 5G instead of pinpointing your location to an area that's only three quarters of a square mile. With 5G, they're going to be able to do it down to a few square meters. And so if somebody's tracking you with 5G, you're not even going to be able to do something like blend into a crowd of people or uh, you know, drive down the highway when there's high traffic and be able to blend in with the traffic because the region is so small. They're going to be able to pinpoint you, you know, down to your car or down to basically the amount of space that a normal human being would take up anyway. And this level of tracking is already possible and it's already been used, uh, at least by the military, to track down terrorists. So a good example is uh, like I told you, with 4G, they can track you down to three quarters of a square mile. So like a large city block, okay, maybe a couple of city blocks. So within that space, you might have a couple of apartment complexes if it's a more urban area. And obviously you'll have thousands of people if they're large apartment complexes, thousands of people living within that region. So the military might not want to do a strike uh, within that amount of space, say if there's a bad guy that they're tracking, so they're, they'll say uh, to the intelligence agencies, hey, we need to get more accurate information. Well, with Wi-Fi, if you manage to hack the Wi-Fi that's in those apartments, or if you can hack the public Wi-Fis and see all the data that's going through, everybody that's connecting to them, all the unique devices and stuff like that, if that guy connects to that Wi-Fi, they can pinpoint them down to the specific building, well, the specific unit, really, the specific unit on a specific floor in a specific building, and then, you know, either go and um, probably not do a drone strike in a situation like that, because that'll level the whole damn building, but send in a SWAT team, send in, you know, whatever they need to do to just get that guy without any additional civilian casualties. And as far as the areas that I don't know for sure, but I suspect these things. So take this part with a grain of salt. I suspect that the tracking capabilities from the standpoint of the software that's going to be running on these 5G towers is going to be increased. Now, the reason I think this is because we already know that the transmission speeds of 5G are going to be significantly higher than 4G. So any additional data that's not being collected by 4G, which might help the government or whoever, uh, these companies, track a person, well now it's going to be easier to actually transmit that data because you've got the infrastructure, you've got the speeds to do it. And we already know that there is an incentive from these companies that are going to be putting in these cell phone towers to track you, to collect your data. I mean, if you look at the major tech companies that are out right now, Tracking customers, collecting their data is a major part of their business model. They make a whole lot of money from it. And same thing goes with the government. Okay, we've known since the Snowden leaks that the NSA is tracking all of the US citizens. They're tracking everything that we do and not, it hasn't stopped. You know, if anything, it's only increased. So people are aware of this, but they don't even care, right? And people suspected before them. Right? There were a lot of people who suspected that the government was listening to everything you do. And now you see what people are doing. They buy Alexas, they buy Google Homes. You know, if you went back to like the 1960s, people would be worried about uh, saying something over the phone because they're like, oh, the government might have tapped my phone. They might be listening. But now you have like an echo in your phone, like a, a, an echo in your um, house, like a literal wiretap just sitting there connected to your Wi-Fi, listening to everything and sending it off to Amazon. So there's an incentive to do it. The technology is there for them to do it. So I think that it, more than likely they're going to increase the tracking capability from the software standpoint. We already know that it's going to happen from the hardware standpoint. Uh, and as far as the health risks go, I mean, that's kind of what most of these videos that you'll see on YouTube talking about 5G talk about. Um, I don't really know for sure if there's a bunch of negative health risks to human beings or to animals when it comes to 5G. Uh, that's not really my area of expertise. Um, but what I do see when it comes to people that are saying there's no adverse health risk, the authority that they tend to source is the World Health Organization. Uh, the same WHO who tried to tell us that this pandemic was going to be 
basically the end of the world, right? That millions and millions of people, uh, normal healthy people were going to die and that it would just be this major crisis and there's all kinds of things that they got wrong. So I personally don't trust the World Health Organization. I think that there's a, there's something a little bit spooky going on there. Uh, I don't really trust them as an authority. Now, maybe you're thinking, uh, this technology won't really affect me because I don't have a 5G phone. I'm not going to buy a, 4G, a 5G phone. I'm not going to adopt that technology. Now, that may be true now. It might not affect you right now, but it's going to become less true over time and it's going to become more difficult for you to avoid that technology. As it stands right now, you can barely even get a new flagship phone that does not have 5G built into it. And eventually, phones that don't have 5G are going to become as rare or rarer than phones that don't have a headphone jack in them. Okay, Apple killed off the headphone jack. Well, the beginning of it getting killed off was just four years ago with the iPhone 7. And now pretty much all companies have adopted it. It's nearly impossible to get at least a flagship level phone, like a you know top of the line premium phone with the best CPU, best cameras, best RAM, best everything that actually has a headphone jack on it. And the headphone jack is just a minor design aspect of a phone, if you really think about it. Uh, when upgrades to the cellular infrastructure happen, and your phone doesn't isn't compatible with those upgrades, it's basically gonna render your phone useless. I've had this happen with phones before. Uh, the cell phone that I used to own when I was in high school, straight up doesn't work. It's no longer compatible with, uh, I think I got that before LTE rolled out, so like pretty much no phone, no phone companies support it. So it's basically just like a glorified iPod at this point. So my main concern with 5G is the tracking. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other concerns that you guys have with 5G, uh, if there's some spookiness that I forgot to mention. And as always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Bye now.